What would it mean to you if you were stripped of your identity? What would be left? You've lost your home, your possessions, your shoes, your clothes, your name. Who are you now? Less than 24 hours ago, we were in Auschwitz, the most infamous of Nazi concentration camps. Camps with the sole intention of dehumanization and ultimately extermination. The process started with the separation of laborers from those deemed no use to the Nazis. Anyone under the age of 15, elderly, disabled or pregnant wouldn't survive more than two days. Before entering the gas chamber, any belongings the prisoners brought with them were taken and utilised by the Nazis. Seeing these objects that were salvaged during the liberation was the most intense, almost uncomfortable moment of the day for me. Every object was part of someone's identity, but due to the tensions between sameness and individuality amongst the collection, it's still impossible to tell whose identity they were part of. Though it was the intentions of the Nazis to strip the prisoners of their identity, in many occasions it was your fundamental skills from your previous life that led to your survival. Walking through the barracks, we saw mugshots highlighting the prisoners' occupations. Jobs ranged from carpenters to farmers, hairdressers to musicians. These were seen as more viable based on the, to the extent in which the Nazis could exploit them, resulting them in being able to live just that bit longer. 1.1 million people died in Auschwitz. Can you name two of them? What about Jane Haining, a Scottish missionary who was arrested when trying to protect Jewish schoolgirls, most of whom were orphans? She died in Auschwitz. Or how about Maximilian Kolbe? He was arrested whilst working in a monastery near Warsaw, ultimately residing in Auschwitz. After three prisoners successfully escaped, ten were taken to be starved as deterrents to other potential escapees. As one man was taken, he cried, My wife, my children. Kolbe, hearing this, volunteered to take his place. He too died in Auschwitz. But moving now from the past to the future, we are imploring you to remember these victims as individuals. The name, the shoes, the clothes that made up their identity also make up yours. They were people like you. Equally, they should be remembered as people like your neighbour, your friend, even your mother or your father. There are millions in the world at the moment in danger of being forgotten, stripped of their identity and at risk of becoming just another faceless statistic, either in the refugee camps of Europe or the battlegrounds of the Middle East. Only once our way of remembering has changed can we truly learn from humanity's mistakes of the past. Thank you.